Hi, my name is Carol Ann Blank, and I'm coming to you from uh, New Jersey in the United States. I'm going to be presenting music making experiences in the early childhood inclusion classroom, music therapists supporting classroom teachers. I am the manager of research and special needs services for Music Together Worldwide, and I am very excited and pleased to be able to share with you uh, what I know. So uh, music therapist takeaways for this session uh, will be to understand the importance of an emphasis on differentiated instruction, strategies for inclusion in music making that support all learners, and you'll gain some ideas for supporting classroom teachers. Classroom teacher takeaways uh, will include an understanding of the role of music therapists and what they can bring to your classroom, uh, classroom practices and culture, how to effectively choose music making experiences for your diverse learners, and also gain ideas for integrating music into your everyday learning experiences with children. So, um, we probably already know this, but I really want to um, highlight it so it's it's not the elephant in the room. Music making can support children's development and learning when it is developmentally appropriate, is musically rich, is accept is accessible to all learners, is participatory, is part of the school's core curriculum incorporates the modeling of adults and is fun and engaging for everyone. I'd like to discuss these points uh, a little bit more, a little bit deeply. So music making first and foremost does not replace what is happening in the classroom by the classroom teacher. Rather, it provides additional opportunities for students to grow as learners and, 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 and people by providing them with additional multi-sensory experiences. And what I mean by developmentally appropriate is that the songs are pitched in the children's tessitura, which is higher than a lot of adults is, is musically rich, that, the, the, um, that there are different meters and tonalities included in the songs that are used in the classroom, that they're not just all major songs. They're not just all done in duple meter. That these experiences are designed to be accessible to all learners. Are there ways to provide children who don't use speech or take a long time to process auditory input and formulate their response? Uh, are there ways for children with physical disabilities to participate? It's participatory. These are experiences of music that the children, that are geared to the children, that the children are expected and invited to participate in, not that they are uh, given to the children or music done at the children, but it's with and for and together. The music is part of the school's core curriculum, that there is an investment in music as a domain of learning that is, a, that is necessary and is appropriate as math and science and reading, and that actually music making can inform the development even across all of these other learning domains. Incorporates the modeling of adults so if the music specialist comes in or the music therapist comes in and makes music with the class, the adults are there too. And the adults are making music alongside the children. And it's fun and engaging for everyone. If, uh, if it's not fun, it's really hard to be musical. Okay, so here are some key facts. Classroom teachers uh, I've noticed in my practice, classroom teachers really give equal focus on individual and group learning. Um, they know exactly where each child is in terms of the steps to learning new concepts that the children are at, uh, and also 
uh, where the whole class is as a whole in any given, um, any given domain area. Um, classroom management is key. If the class isn't uh, well managed and children aren't regulated and feel safe and comfortable in the classroom processes, it's really difficult for learning to happen. I would probably say that learning really isn't happening with any sort of regularity if classroom management is, um, is, is something that needs to be supported. And classroom teachers really rely on observable, observable behavior that they, can, that they can use in their documentation, in their data collection, they have to. Children with disabilities, at least in the United States, uh, often have uh, individualized educational plans. And these are uh, specific documents that uh, data collection is key to um, updating, so the data needs to be collected so that the IEP can be updated and, and services are provided. Music therapists understand that there is um, a regulating effect of music on individuals and groups so that uh, children who may experience a, a sense of dysregulation or need to increase their arousal level in order to, to uh, more fully engage in the classroom experience, music therapists know how to use music, all the elements of music, and these are just a few of them, melody, harmony, beat, rhythm, and timbre, that's tone quality, uh, to, to both uh, activate and soothe individuals or whole groups of children. We value music therapists, value expressions of music, and th th this is in a couple of different ways. If a child's behavior doesn't necessarily look musical, we can see the music in it. We can see the rhythm in it. We can see expressions of steady beat. And we also know that there's not really too many wrong ways to shake a shaker egg or tap rhythm sticks. Um, we are um, more likely to be okay with lots of different ways that children uh, want to explore the tools of music, the movement props or the instruments. And we also know that music behavior is data. One of the things that music therapists can help classroom teachers in is understanding the children's reactions to music as actual data points they can use. Students, you know, so the, the combination of the classroom teacher and music therapist working relationship benefits students by giving students additional skills for self-regulation and relating to others. Uh, there's also many opportunities for self-expression, problem solving, and collaboration within a music making experience. We also, in music making, show, uh, we give the children opportunities to show what they know in multiple ways. So there are lots of areas uh, in which music therapists and classroom teachers, and I'm really speaking to general education teachers or special educators, may overlap in their intention. But there, these are the subtle differences. So um, again, for the purpose of our time, I'm focusing on the situation where the music therapist is going into uh, a classroom. And the adult that's in charge there is the classroom teacher. It's their space. So music therapists really benefit from clear communication of the, the, the current curricular objectives and the specific areas where a student needs some additional support. So um, music therapists should have access to the individualized educational plan in many situations, but sort of that granul granular weekly change re um, information really needs to come from the classroom teacher. And so music therapists, don't be afraid to ask. Classroom teachers, don't be afraid to volunteer that information. It's super important so that even in the moment that the therapist can um, tailor their personalized intervention for the student or the group to what the student is actually, the student or group actually needs. And classroom teachers will benefit from knowing what strategies they can implement in the classroom to help a child or children establish their readiness to learn. 
that they that they exhibited perhaps they exhibited a readiness to learn in music therapy and uh, now let's teach the classroom teacher uh, how that uh, how music making can get the child in a space where they can learn and then for example uh, transition songs the use of transition songs not all transition songs help children transition all in the same way music therapists can help with that really sort of uh, defined way for this particular child to make that happen and so I'm going to teach you a song okay this is a, this is called stick tune uh, it is uh, part of the Music Together Family Favorites repertoire, and I'm going to teach it to you, and um, perhaps this would be something that would be interesting for you. If you uh, want to listen to this song, uh, you can listen to it on the musictogether.com website, or you can download our free Hello Everybody app, and there are uh, a few songs already pre-populated in that app, and Stick Tune is one of them. Hey, hey, what do you say? Shall we say hello today? But um, bum, bum, but um, I am waving, but um, bum, bum, but um, will you wave with me? But um, bum, bum, but um, bum, bum, but um, hey, what do you say? Let's wave to Jose today. But um, bum, bum, but um, we are waving, but um, bum, bum, but um. Ba-dum, bum bum ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. Hey, what do you say? Can we wave like Phoebe today? How is Phoebe waving? Ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. Ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. Ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. bum bum ba -dum. Hey, what do you say? Let's move like Miss Johnson today. Shall we move our shoulders? ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. bum bum ba -dum. Hey, what do you say? We gotta move faster today. ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. Moving faster. ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. Moving faster. ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum. Bum bum ba -dum. What do you say? We gotta move real slow today. Ba -dum. Bum, bum, ba -dum. <laughs> ba -dum. bum, bum, ba -dum. I'm following you. Ba -dum. <laughs> bum, bum, ba -dum. bum, bum, ba -dum. What do you say? I'm feeling a, a little sad today. But um, bum, bum, but um, <laughs> but um, bum, bum, but um. Thank you for the tissue, bum, 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 but um, bum, bum, but um. Hey. What do you say? Can we swim like fish today? Ba dum, bum, bum, ba dum. Ba dum, bum, bum, ba dum. Ba dum, bum, bum, ba dum. Bum, bum, ba dum. Hey, what do you say? Shall we pat our laps today? Ba dum, bum, bum, ba dum. Take a deep breath. Ba dum. Bum, bum, ba -dum. Bum, bum, ba -dum. Can you take another deep breath with me? Well done. How does your body feel? Your body's can feel really, really calm, or they can feel really, really excited after we do something like this. So, <laughs> thank you for uh, joining me in that experience. And I want to show you a little bit about what we know about Universal Design for Learning Guidelines. 
I just want to show you the very top line right here. There's so much really good information. This is the Universal Design for Learning Theory and Practice by Ann Meyer, David Rose, and David Gordon. And this is from the UDL guidelines from Cast uh, Inc. This is their two, 2013 version. And uh, you can find them at cast.org, C-A-S-T dot O-R-G. So, uh, this, this graphic highlights the different areas of the brain that are impacted or activated when uh, we design experiences of learning that are engaging or meant to be engaging. Uh, and then moving to the middle column, uh, Represent, representation happens in a totally different part of the brain. And then action and, and expression happens in the other part of, in, in a totally different part of the brain. And if you've noticed, it's kind of working from the center to the back of the brain, center of the brain to the back of the brain, and then to the front of the brain. Let me tell you something. Music activates the entire brain all at once. If you are trying to um, establish and reinforce skills for a child or a group of children for whom uh, learning is a little bit uh, difficult to do or has to be done under the correct circumstances and all the planets have aligned, let's get their brains processing. Let's get their brains lit up. So um, music's primary elements, again, melody, harmony, beat, rhythm, and timbre are the motivating forces behind music's persistent power and importance in our lives. So inclusion strategies for uh, engagement, we're really hoping to model self-regulation skills. Singing and movement promote deeper breathing. And when you've taken in oxygen, you are um, you're priming that self-regulation pump so that if you're breathing uh, and stretching, um, self-regulation will be easier to do. Engagement also provides uh, the opportunity and music making um, with the purpose or the lens of engagement um, helps children to sustain their effort and persistence particularly the steady beat and replicable, me replicable melodies that are easy to follow. And then student and adult participation provide novelty and recruit interest. So in the experience of stick tune, I was pretending that other students or the teacher were modeling these movements. And when we have to shift our attention and see who the leader is next while still maintaining the steady beat, uh, we've, we've done a, a lot to recruit interest. So in, within music making, there's also um, opportunities for representation. Repetition promotes mastery, which then helps, obviously, um, addresses comprehension. Um, not just repetition, but also singing and the flow of words uh, and, and, and notes uh, and melody helps to uh, provide helps to provide um, the practice that you need to have the knowledge in there so that you can comprehend it. Language and symbols. When we pair um, visuals, pictures, and books with uh, songs, uh, then we are um, making sure that children um, have the opportunity to. Um, explore their, uh, explore communication. If children have communication devices, uh, they need also to be used in music making so that children can um, use speech or children can use the communication that is no, uh, native to them. And then also perception. The interesting thing about this is sometimes if um, verbal communication or device communication is not um, is not a child's uh, way of communicating what they know. We need to look at body movement, instrument play, how they're using their voice or their device 
to understand a little bit more about what they know. Action and, and expression. Um, so ex expressions of development of executive functions can be subtle and they can be seen in music making. One very obvious way that can be seen is, can you stop when I stop? Can you unfreeze when I unfreeze? Um, expression and communication. All modes of communication can be included in musical expression. This is really important. And then physical action is the impetus for physical activity. So how do children learn? Um, children learn through multimodal experiences, relationships, imitation, uh, active versus passive learning, exposure and experimentation, repetition and play. We do all of these things in a music experience. A music therapist can help classroom teachers by providing insight into how a particular child responds to one or more of the elements of music. This information can be useful to classroom teachers when trying to craft learning experiences that are accessible to those learners. And often the enhanced multimodal approach doesn't take away from the ability of the rest of the class to learn the same material. So I'm going to show you something. This is a book, She Sells Seashells. Um, it's one of Music Together's sing-along storybooks and I'd like to share it with you. She sells seashells. This is the tongue twister that everybody knows. So here, I'm going to do it a couple of different ways. Okay. Lots of words, lots of words. The grown-ups should be, read all these words. It's got some history. It's got to, oh, here we go. Phew. Oh my gosh. Finally, the, 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 the story here. She sells seashells by the seashore. Where is she? She's way up here. She sells seashells by the seashore. Brown and gray and blue, yellow, pink, white, green. Brown and gray and blue, yellow, pink, white, green. Okay, now I'm going to do it as uh, the song. What do you see? She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Brown and gray and blue, yellow, pink, white, green. Brown and gray and blue, yellow, pink, white, green. Let me try it one more time with you, okay? Now, there are many more pages in this story, but we're only doing the first couple of phrases. What do you see? What's that? Now, I'm assuming that a child is pointing this out to me. Steven, you see seagulls. Steven sees seagulls. Repeat that. Steven sees seagulls. What do you see? Maya sees the ocean. Maya sees the ocean. She sells seashells by the seashore. What do you see? Greg sees a girl. Greg sees the girl. 
girl, what do you see? A dog? Can I hear your singing voice? You see a dog, they see a dog. She sells seashells by the seashore. This storybook comes with a download code for the song, so you don't have to sing it if you don't want to. Okay. Brown and gray and blue, yellow, pink, white, green. Will you point with me? Brown and, where is gray? Brown and Gray and blue, yellow, pink, white, green. Oh, here's the gray. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Um, all right. I have to show you something else first. Music and the, the approaches to learning. We addressed a lot of these just in this example that I gave you and then in the previous example of stick tune. Music and approaches to learning. Music uh, um, helps uh, to increase children's motivation to learn. We also, it also addresses curiosity and initiative to engage in learning. Through music making, Young children uh, ha experience an openness to new tasks and challenges, persistence to complete a task, problem solving ability, ability to make a plan of action, imagination, and creativity. So the music therapist, um, the, 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 what I'd like to show you next is uh, an experience of music making with uh, a small group of children who they, they uh, knew this song very well in its traditional form. And then um, we did a songwriting activity with it and they learned different, um, they dove into creating a song. Um, this is an after-school music program for kindergartners. I don't have communication with their classroom teachers, so this isn't meant to be a true representation of the relationship of the, the classroom teacher and the music therapist that I'm describing here uh, in this presentation. Rather, this is an example of how songwriting experiences uh, could go, and uh, She Sells Seashells is the basis of this experience. The children know it really well, and now they're exploring songwriting. Um, the video is, um, well, since this whole experience is a student-owned experience and student-generated experience, uh, the video is done by a student.
that experience, the children really got a chance to delve into their work and collaborate, uh, even though it's really hard to manage all of one's really good ideas. So um, let's talk about resources for a minute. Music Together has lots of resources. We have uh, se several sing-along storybooks, uh, song downloads for family favorites one and two. Uh, we have instruments, movement props, and a curriculum for schools called Play Along that you can uh, see if they're, uh, that may be uh, of interest to you. Um, there are several uh, webinars from edweb.net's um, music and learning, er, music and early learning community uh, that I have and that other um, music educators have put up there. Um, so thank you very much for spending time with me. I hope this was helpful and I would love to talk with you sometime.